Welcome back to Gear Check Games. This is episode 21 of our Pokemon Red playthrough. We gotta go catch a few more Mons, and at the same time, we gotta go get our undersides wet. Oh boy. Yeah. Finally some refreshment. Although we were surfing to get to the power plant, though. That's true. That was just river water, though. Uh -huh. we gotta I still go. like that. <laughs> I still like that Bagon Sprite is just a... Or Dratini Sprite is just a... Just a garden variety snake. Yeah. I mean, it's probably the closest one that they had at the time. Probably, yeah. yeah. I gotta ask, though, when it turns into Dragonite, does it still have a snake-like menu sprite? No, I, I think they change it to the generic, like, four-legged monster. Why are you using Leech Life on a Reddit? <laughs> I'm trying to catch it. Well, yeah, but you'd slightly lower it. I don't know. For a second, I thought you were trying to, like, flex on this thing, because it's like, oh, we're on the first route again, but now I'm so strong, I can take this thing out in a single leech life. It's like, this Trey, that's not how leech life works. <laughs> I don't think you know how this game works, Trey. My god, this thing is resilient. I know. Does not want to get in the ball. Yeah. Also and I'm even using great balls. Mostly full HP. Well, yeah, but yeah. It's, he's using great balls. Goodness gracious, etc. I think as a kid, I thought that um, if your level was way higher than that, up to the Ultra Ball, yeah, for the level through your data. Did you see that? Anim Did that animation look weird to anybody else? Not to me. It made it just spun. Uh, well, yeah, but does it? It doesn't always do that, right? The Ultra Balls do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Psycho music ensues. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> These Pidgeys and Rattatas are scary, man. Uh-huh. Now I'm looking for a Tangela. Yeah, I always was a fan of that one episode of the Pokemon anime directed by Hitchcock. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> not, the, not, the, not the Pokemon anime, but the Kirby anime did have that one scene where they uh -huh. mimicked the shower scene with oh, yeah. uh, DDD and Escarg. <laughs> Escarg well, hey, we... We've already mimicked that scene as well in uh, Metroid Zero Mission. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With Good my times. terrible editing. Yeah, Sh shameless plug. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, if you hate this playthrough, go watch our Metroid playthrough. <laughs> it's somehow even worse. Yeah. That was before we got better at editing. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> All of our playthroughs are equally crap. So, needless to say, I do not find a Tangela. Aww. I just find a lot of rats! <laughs> I like Tangela, though. I know! I was. Th I think my thing was, I'll do like 10, 10 to 11 fights, and if I don't find them in that amount of fights, I'll give up. Mm -hmm. God, I, I never even noticed until now that Vaporeon has like a Tauros overworld sprite. <laughs> yeah. And that just like, it weirds me out. Well, you know, when they were I making these things, did they just... I'm guessing maybe they like ran out of time and were just like, we gotta use what we have. <laughs> just make it a cow. We're gonna make a sprite for an overworld sprite for every Pokemon. Oh, that's a lot of Pokemon. Oh, that that Sea King <laughs> sprite looks so bashful. Mm hmm. It's really cool looking though. Like he looks like he's going, you. oh stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop it, Red. Stop. Oh, he's got giant <laughs> lips too. Uh -huh. The definition of fish lips. And is his is his horn usually that big? I think so. Sea King looks like he just got slapped. <laughs> so surprised. Or that. I'm honestly surprised they didn't call Sea King uh, uh, Koi King. Oh yeah, yeah. Koi King. Because I mean, he he looks more like a koi than um, Magikarp does. Yeah, Magikarp just looks dopey. Maybe it was another one of those, like, mix-ups. Yeah. I don't know. Probably yeah, not. Yeah, Dratini should have became Gyarados, if you go by, like, colors and design. Although, Gold Goldine and Sea King are another example of them not using, like, gender-neutral Pokémon names, because they didn't have, like, defined genders in Red and Blue. Yeah. So are you saying there should be a Sea Queen out there, too? Sea Queen. Well, well, I'm saying they should have given it a gender neutral name so that there's not like a female Mr. Mime. <laughs> Which is possible. Yes. Maybe future proofing. It's a good thing to do. It's uh yeah. 
It's a uh, Mrs. Mr. Mime. See, Mime Junior fixes okay. all that. Can you be a junior? Can girls be juniors? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we'll see why not. I've never met a girl that goes by junior, though. Maybe they're just not as egotistical as men are. <laughs> they just don't care. Damn. <laughs> oh, boy. It's got another Sea King. Yeah. And that's all there is to say about that. And, and yeah. if I can, I was going to try and wrap it again, but I was like, ah, one horn attack would kill Bagon. I can't do it. For a second, I was, wait I was waiting for you to throw out Electabuzz, and then I remembered, oh yeah, he's not part of the squad. Yay, I keep box. We, we filled out the squad quite a, quite a long time ago. Although, yeah. part of me did want Electabuzz, but I got, I got my butt beat by, uh, what's his name? Zapdos. Fucking... Zapdos, thank you. I'm, I wanted to call him Big Bird for some reason. <laughs> big, yellow, He's big, bird he's yellow, he's a bird. Yeah. Uh, but since I got my butt kicked, he he's probably going to be on the squad later. It's too bad they didn't get Carol Spinney to do the voice of uh, Zapdos in the movie. Hmm. Wow, welcome to my power plant. <laughs> oh, you want to fight me? You're getting closer? Is this not lip synced at all? It's like, they just dub it over like don't Popeye don't. style. Yes. Don't don't you turn don't you turn this wholesome Sesame Street reference into a JoJo reference, Trey. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it, Tim. Not on my watch, you won't. Someone needs to draw that, like K Kermit versus uh, Big Bird from that. I'm pretty sure there's stuff. already a, that scene, but with Sesame Street characters, yeah. and I think Big Bird is the Dio. Yeah, <laughs> hey, he has, it has to be because it's yellow. <laughs> So yeah, we're we're gonna grind on this route for a little bit because the route between Pallet and uh, Cinnabar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say earlier. I see, I see you're taking the correct route to get to Cinnabar. Oh yeah, I don't want to go through for, through. What are the islands called? Is it, any, anything that necessitates going through Seafoam Islands is just not worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hate that place. It, yeah. <laughs> You gotta strength surf and use repels in there. <laughs> and like, I, I, I kind of like exploring caves in Pokemon games, but that one just for some reason always stumps me. Yeah, that's that's usually the dungeon I skip in any Gen 1 playthrough, and I, I, we're gonna skip it in this one. <laughs> Maybe just the fact that, I don't know, I, I, I guess I always, it's probably a lot simpler than I think it is, but like having to push the boulders from like a top floor in order to block water flow on a lower floor Oh, yeah. Isn't that where Articuno is? I don't know. Just for some reason, I could never get my head around that. But in, in execution, it's probably really simple. So feel free to deride me in the comments if you must. Yeah. And you must. So there you go. I like how horsey is called dragon. Yeah. Matratini. And it's still not a dragon type. Nope, it's the dragon not. Pokemon. Why is it not a dragon type? I know. <laughs> I wonder if that was uh, because of like speedy, speedy translations again. Maybe. I don't know why I saved there. Well, they didn't have. Okay, yeah, they didn't have time to get his name right, but they had time to cleverly write the drunk guy passed out in the road bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. He needs his coffee, dang it. Yeah, he just needs his coffee. Uh huh. That is so genius. <laughs> yeah. Like that man deserves oh, his due no. credit for coming up with that. <laughs> It's him, guys. Koi King. It's the Magikarp guy from every generation. Oh, no! <laughs> hey, you want to fight my team full of Magikarps? Also, Magikarp's sprite in this game... It's just Peter Griffin. Looks like... It looks like his tail fin is coming out of, like, the side of his head. Oh, yeah. Well, he's supposed to be, like, like turning towards the camera. Right, but Magikarp's body shouldn't be long enough to... Like, because look how much of it is coming off on the right side. It shouldn't be long yeah, enough to, like, looks, pose like that. It's kind of chubby. Yeah. God. Maybe it's yeah. supposed to be a side fin. It's a long Magikarp. Oh, no, it's definitely God. a steel fin. You made the joke about Magikarp guy and you used Peter Griffin's voice, and my mind immediately just did a whole family guy cutaway bit <laughs> that, like, would totally fit the show. Remember that where time just, like, fought the Magikarp guy? <laughs> no, it would be like... The, the bit would literally go like, man, this is worse than that time I <laughs> went to Kanto. And then it just cuts to him, and he's like, 
Go, Magikarp! And then he tosses out a Magikarp and just flails around and does nothing. He's like, oh crap, this is the only one I have. We should have a contest for worst Peter and Griffin. He throws impression. out like five more magic carbs. Peter Griffin, god damn it. <laughs> How many times have I said Peter Griffith already in this video and just Peter embarrassed Griffin. myself? If you say it five times in a row, he'll appear like Beetlejuice and do a Yeah, he's already in my room, so. Yeah. How much better would it's been Berserk fun. be if uh, one of the characters was Peter Griffith? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna summon the five demon lords. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's that's my only impression. I, I will quit now. I won't do a Patrick Warburton. Not for these scrubs. <laughs> yeah, you gotta pay for Pat. Yeah. <laughs> part part of me wants to do it, but I must resist. I don't want the I don't want his lawyers coming after me. <laughs> for him doing an impression of him? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you lawyers get here so fast? <laughs> oh, damn it, I already did it! Fuck! He did it! He did the Patrick Warburton for free! <laughs> Honestly, we checked the map and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's no, no, it's impossible. How did you get to Cinnabar Island before us? How did we, punk? <laughs> Hey, we left Celadon. My spinach puffs weren't done. <laughs> you know, Trey, oh, yeah. there are more than two songs in the anime. <laughs> You're right. But these were <laughs> the speedy about? ones that I liked. Yeah. I went through, like, the whole thing and found the ones that, like, I thought would go over, like, rushing or pointless stuff. Next time... <laughs> I do have to say, this music perfectly fits the... Just a seal flapping around in the water at high speed. <laughs> just like in the show. Yeah. I was gonna say for what for one of these like speed up montages, you should put in like tears after the cloudy weather or something. <laughs> okay. It's something that's like or, horrendously uh, unfitting. Satoshi's lament or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Satoshi's lament. <laughs> or whatever it's called, regret or something like that. You're no, I, I, I know which track you're talking about. Yeah. Make it sad. Here's Cinnabar. Yay. Different yeah, music. Yeah. And I like the color here, too. Yeah, Cinnabar always had one of my favorite town themes in Gen 1. It's always like the coastal towns that I end up enjoying. Yeah. I think one of my favorite towns, like you said, is uh, Slateport in Gen 3. Oh, yeah. That, that, that tune is a banger. Yeah. Love Plus, that, that town's just cool. It's got uh -huh. like two or three markets. It's got the master contests. There's a whole bunch of story stuff to do in Slateport. I love all the weirdly educational facilities in Slateport City. Because yeah. on the one hand, you've you've got the Oceanic Museum, which teaches you facts about the ocean, and then you've got the shipyard where they teach you about like how boats are put together, and then yeah. there are just random. NPCs around town like sharing like nautical factoids with you. It's like, why are you all here? <laughs> Maybe they're just conf they're just, they just feel compelled to share that information because they just came from the museum. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, welcome to Slateport. We love boats. No, really, we love boats. As a wise schoolhouse rock once said, knowledge is power. Or something. I, I, like I was gonna do the, you, the more you know thing, but that didn't fit. Oh my god, do we We've... finally have enough? Finally! Expal. I have caught exactly 50 kinds. Great! I don't think I've ever gotten this item in Gen 1. <laughs> it's, you shouldn't. <laughs> well, yeah, because this was this is the only game where the EXP share works like this. Yeah. Because it um, if we haven't explained it yet, which I don't remember if we have... Yeah. Instead of... Um, giving all of the or half of the exp from a battle to the pokemon holding it it mm. instead divides the exp equally between all of the pokemon on your team yep and it shows it to you individually oh every no every time oh my god oh, trey god. you turn this thing off right after a test <laughs> uh because because that was that was what I wanted because I wanted to I wanted to show it off yeah because I didn't quite remember exactly how it worked so I was uh -huh. like oh maybe maybe I can raise Dratini fast but then I'm like oh no 
Oh no, I've made a grievous error. <laughs> you tried you tried to cheat the game and only cheated yourself. I did, yeah. Oh, there goes the mouse, the Cerebi again. <laughs> there goes the fly from, yeah. from Mario Paint. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I wonder if I had it just like hovered on on the emulator. Uh, I think, just wanted to move it. I think you can set up your emulator so that it doesn't um, display the mouse. If you go into the settings, you, I you can set up. Oh, if you're recording with OBS, you can set it up so that it just doesn't see the mouse. Oh, well, future smart tray will do that. <laughs> I guess on the subject of emulators, I really wish they would put the Pokemon games on more uh, platforms. I know. And now is not what? really a good time to really be talking about Nintendo and virtual console yeah. stuff. But <laughs> like. You know, I love playing these games, but, like, I'd kind of like to play them on a TV. Yeah. Like, that's just how I am. Like, I don't know, the Switch kind of changed everything for me. Like, now, unless it's, like, a rare situation, I don't really want to play games on, like, a tiny little screen. <laughs> and I just wish I could play them on my TV, but, like, unless you have a Super Game Boy or a Game Boy player, you know, both of which yeah. are, like, nearly, like, 20 years old now. Well, and expensive. There's no way to do that. <laughs> And I know these games were designed to be handheld games, but, like, there's no reason... Okay, there's no technical reason why they couldn't put these games on, a On, like, the Switch or the Wii U or whatever. Yeah. So we just passed, um... Uh, a game-required dungeon. Oh, yeah, the, the Silphco. Yeah. But before we do anything like that in this part... We gotta give Marcel an upgrade. Yeah, psychic, finally. <laughs> yeah. I could have got this a long time ago, but I, I want. C Confusion was good enough, because psychics are broke as heck in, per in Gen 1 anyway. Mm hmm. So I was like, ah, I'll live with it for now, and I'll just go get Pokemon psychic. Later. Part Why does Snorlax get psychic? I don't know. He can learn, like, Blizzard and Surf and stuff, too. Yeah, He's I guess. Very versatile. <laughs> but yeah. Mr. Mime is now Sir Mime. Like, he will be unstoppable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, once you get that TM, congratulations, you've won the game. Yeah. So we're gonna go prove just how broke he is by uh, fighting the fighting fighting gym. I guess we'll have to go into the bargain basement gym since Team Rocket ain't letting us in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bargain basement. That's another thing I like about Team Rocket in this, is that, um, just because of the way the game is set up, like, it incentivizes you to go after them, because, like, they're blocking off things that you, like, you know you want to get into the gym, but yeah. Team Rocket is blocking the entrance, because they're, like, in control of the city, so you have to, like, stop whatever it is they're doing to make, like, the gym accessible. And I just feel like that's more of an elegant way of doing it than having, like, NPCs in the later games tell you, like, we need to stop the evil team before we do the next... Because at that point, you're not yeah. doing it because... Okay, I don't know. I'm not explaining this very well. It, it just it just feels more artificial. Like, you don't know what your next goal... Like, you know that you're going to have to go to a gym next, but it's not like, oh, I can see the gym, and I see the person blocking it, and I know what I have to do to get that person to move. Yeah, because Team Rocket's infested the town, and you've, and you've ran into them before, so like yeah. narratively, you're like, oh, I gotta see these bozos again. Yeah, like, you, it, it doesn't feel so much like you're just doing it because the story, like, necessitates it. Yeah. I, li I like stuff like that, and I also like stuff where the path you're taking anyway, the enemy team is also there doing whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, you're constantly running into them anyway. Yeah, like their 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 presence is felt. Yeah, by everyone except the police. Well, yeah, that's one thing I like about uh, Team Skull and also about uh, uh, Team Magma and Aqua. Like, you do run into them along the way, but in the beginning, they're not like a threat. Mm -hmm. And not until uh, you get to the mountain, which is in your way, anyway. <laughs> yeah, not until they want to blow up the volcano to create more land. <laughs> Which, honestly, to me, that climax should have been the end-of-game climax. <laughs> not not the Groudon and uh, uh, Kyogre stuff. I don't know, I always thought that was kind of silly, because that volcano they want to blow up is in the middle of the continent. Like, mm -hmm. is it going to reach yeah. far enough to create more land? 
I don't know. They, they want to fill in all the lakes and ponds. T to be fair, I always, I always played Ruby instead of Sapphire, but why does Team Aqua yeah. want to blow up the volcano? Because it's full of magma. Th They're arch nemesis. We're going to melt the land. <laughs> not, not a very well thought out plan there, Archie. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it was appropriate that they gave him the more, like, brutish redesign in Omega yeah. Ruby Alpha Sapphire. See, this reminds me, you know how, uh, how Shaymay in his eight hour long review of Omega Ruby? In his fantastic eight hour long review of those oh, games. Oh, yeah. I've, I've listened to it twice. Like, it's a good review. Uh -huh. uh, I've wasted 16 hours of my time. Uh, <laughs> Not wasted, Shay Trey. Shaymay, I love, I love Shaymay. I can't, I can't disparage the man. Yeah, man. It's my favorite. Wait, is he Scottish or Irish? I can't remember. He's always making new videos about why I'm enjoying Metroid wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but uh, he says that uh, Alpha Sapphire was created first. And I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. The story like fits Ruby better to me. <laughs> oh yeah. Because like they want to blow up a volcano, they want to awaken Groudon. Like these things are like, like you can see the. Res how they would be instantly, they would have instant results if they were implemented. See, Aqua, mm -hmm. though, it'd take a while to flood the Earth. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think Emerald made a better use of those um, villains because in the original games, you kind of, you could kind of tell that they had to make, like, a variety of locations that would either be appropriate for one or the other. Like, the volcano is appropriate for Team Magma. The, um... Lily Cove City hideout is better for Team Aqua. Yeah. But in Ruby and Sapphire, they both appear in every location. Yeah. In, like, their respective games. So it's just like, what is, what is Team Magma doing in this, like, waterlogged base? Yeah. Or at the bottom of the ocean trying to resurrect this, like, land-based creature. Yeah. It's like, and why is Groudon at the bottom of the ocean? Did, did Kyogre win? <laughs> yeah, in, in Emerald, they ne they neatly put him inside the volcano. Because, fun fact, underneath the ocean is more land. <laughs> and it's all and it all makes sense. So anyway, now that we've been playing this for like I ten minutes... I haven't attention to the game at all. The, yeah. uh, the fighting dojo, which is kind of an yeah. interesting idea. It's like an unofficially sanctioned gym. Yeah. It's more like a, a real gym. It's just a bunch of dudes working out with their cool fighting Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It's like the after-school karate club. Yeah. Wasn't the anime's interpretation of this just like a guy who had like a really powerful sand shrew? Anybody else see that episode? Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the one where just he knows one move, Fissure. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and he was he trained it to be like uh, resistant to water by like throwing it into a pool every day. <laughs> That's mm. dark. <laughs> He's basically that one kid that just takes his Charizard and uses only his Charizard through the whole game. Uh huh. <laughs> so I like I like the end of this uh, little gym too, because instead of a gym, you get a really good fighting mon, no matter what. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan are a good. Uh offensive addition to your team if you're if you're missing that uh, like physical power yeah and if and if i am running low on on brute force normally i go for hitmonlee because he's he's pretty strong mm -hmm. yeah i think i used hitmonlee as well yeah hitmonchan didn't really come into his own until the physical special split because yeah you know obviously he, he's more like defensively oriented but he also yeah. has like all of these different punching moves like thunder punch ice punch what have you Problem is, yeah. in this gen, and until gen 4, all of those were special attacks. Yeah. So Hitmonchan couldn't really make very good use of them, unfortunately. So that means Hitmonlee is just like, if you want a solid fighter and you can't get my, my champ because you don't have someone to trade with, like, Hitmonlee is mm -hmm. the next next best thing, honestly. Actually, now that I think about it, does, does Hitmonchan have good special in gen 1? I forget. He, he might. I don't pick him up here, uh, because in almost every other playthrough I pick up Hitmonlee. So Please excuse the clickety-clack, I'm actually going to give this a look real quick. 
clickety clack down the track. It's Joe looking something up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Jackie. See, when you pick them up, they go to the PC, but not when you want to go catch them. It's Jackie Hitmonchan. Oh yeah, no, his special base stat in Gen 1 was 35. Oof. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he tries to use Thunder Punch and it's kind of like licking a battery. It's like, ow. Mm -hmm. Bad idea. <laughs> he, to use Fire Punch, he lights a match at you and punches you. <laughs> <laughs> he just punches his cigarette to light it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which, hey, I mean, originally, or what, who is it, like, the real Bruce Lee could, could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? Have you not seen it where he has the... What are you talking that video? about? Have you seen that video of Bruce Lee lighting the uh, match with the nunchucks? No, I haven't. He he puts <laughs> the he puts the okay the the strip of the uh, the thing that goes on the outside of the match box on his nunchucks, and he's whipping them so fast he can light matches with them. Okay, that okay, that's pretty cool and all, but I thought you were gonna tell me that Bruce Lee could like create fire with his bare hands. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, was punched, literally... he punched a match and lit it. Yeah. <laughs> He was that fast. Create friction. Only in the world of make believe. He was mm -hmm. a true firebender. Oh well. Oh, well, who knows what we'll run into next time? Will I take on Team Rocket? Will I go grind? Are we gonna go from boringly catching all the Pokemon to boringly going through the Sylphco? <laughs> Find out next time. Same Poke time, same Poke channel. Yeah. Poke channel. The game sucked. Never mind. Don't come back. Abort. <laughs>